today we have a gospel that can be a little bit tricky, difficult maybe, but allow me to highlight some elements that I hope are going to help us to uh, get the main message of today's gospel. The first element, it is about a man, first it's a parable that Jesus is, tell, is telling us, talking, uh, telling the, uh, the people of his time, it's about a man who is going on a journey. So, before he left, he leaves, he gives talents. It is a talent to three servants. To the first one, five. To the second one, two. And to the third one, one. And scholars say that that journey means the time of the church. Let me explain what I mean. It is Jesus Christ saying, now that I am going to be um, killed, I'm going to be resurrected, and I'm going to be ascended into heaven, the time of the church begins. The time that we, the Catholic Church, has to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> I'm sorry. He is not going to be with us physically, so we have to work, we have to do something. And he is entrusted the church, each one of the members of the church, with talents. In the context, and this is the second element, in the context, I, I hope I was clear, huh? otherwise, I'm sorry. In the context of the Bible, of the gospel, talent, talent, uh, are money. So he, this man, is entrusted, entrusted, entrusting his servants with money. And I'm going to give you some, uh, I didn't know I'm reading a book, okay? Don't think that I know everything, I, I'm just reading it. A talent was approximately 6,000 denarii. And a denarius, that's in plural, was the standard day's wage for a worker of the time of Jesus Christ. So 6,000 was 6,000 days of work. So it was a lot of money. Even the one who received only one talent, he received a lot of money. So now you do the math. Uh, the one who received five talents, he received something like 30,000 denarii. And the one who received two talents, received 12,000 denarii. Good money. So there is that the thir third thing that we have to say. So that man, the man who was on a journey, is a very generous man. He doesn't give just a very small amount. He gives a lot. That is telling us something about God and about Jesus Christ. He is a God, our God is a God who gives with in abundance. He is not cheap. No. He likes to give. There is another element. He gives to this one, five, two, one. The gospel says that in a beautiful way, according to his ability. So we all have been created equal, but we have different abilities. I don't want to talk about that. A psychologist could do a better, better speech about that. How we cannot compare with the other, because the other has other abilities. And it's wonderful. He has to do it. She has to do it. So every one of us has a different ability that we can put into service to the other. We have to serve the other. And I cannot, we do a, a bad, we take a bad a way, a bad, a, a bad path. When, you start, when we start comparing ours, com, com, comparing? Com, no, what is the term? To com, uh, oh my God, now I'm confused. With it. When you start to compare, yeah, compare yourself with the others, because we are so different. We have different abilities. That's a very important element, and I just want to mention it, not say much about that. At the la and I don't want to continue with that, just the end, at the end of the, of, the, of the gospel, each one 
when the master is coming back and the scholars say that this is the second coming of Jesus Christ, so we are going to be judged by what we did with the talents we received one day. And I was thinking that that means that we have to first understand which talent we have. Otherwise, how can we use them? You know what I mean? If somebody, and, I, and believe me, somebody has asked me, people have asked me, Father, I don't know what can I do in the church? So that person doesn't know about his, his or her talent because he or she doesn't know what to do. You, and, and I cannot tell you, I'm sorry, when the person comes to me saying, I say, I have no idea. I'm trying to discover my own talents. Now, how can I discover the talents of the other one? I mean, complicated. Each one has to discover. It's a personal discovery, you want to put it that way. I cannot, I can have an idea maybe, but the most important thing is to discover what is my talent. And we, what we use, what is used in the, in the, um, in the gospel as a, a monetary word for us in English is used in another way. We say that this person is a talented person, which means it's a gifted person. And I think in every single language we use that. So talent became, in many languages, the skills and the uh, qualifications we have. Okay, so I continue. So we have to discover what are my talents or which one is my talent. And discovering that talent or those talents, we have to use them because, again, at the second coming of Jesus Christ, he is going to tell us and ask us, what did you do with your talent? How did you put that into service in the church? The first one, he did a wonderful job. He received five, now he made another five. The second one too, and this is important. Both of them, so it's not about quantity. Both of them, and you, you, you can go if you don't believe me, receive the same reward. Even the first one made five, and the second one two, what the same joy, the master's joy. They receive the same joy. It's not that, okay, you are giving me or presenting me five talents, so you have something greater. No. And you who receive only two, something lesser. No, same. Because it's not about quantity, it's about quality. This is another great element. It is about how we use our talents, now how much talents we have. So th there is no excuse. There's not, uh, we cannot have an excuse like, ah, you know, I just got one talent. And that man, whoever is that man, got five. No, it's about using the talents. Use, using them, period. And we are going to receive the same reward. And the last one didn't do anything. And it's a very difficult, not difficult, maybe uh, mm, strong sentence that the master says to that man, you wicked, lazy servant, lazy. He didn't do anything. So it's about omission. He had some talent, but he was unable to use them or to use it. It was only one, whatever, it doesn't matter. So he didn't use the talent. He didn't put into service those talents. He didn't help the church in which he was to grow. It is a beautiful gospel and it's very, very difficult gospel. Because it's about how we are using our talents in this church, Blessed Sacrament, the Catholic Church. How are we trying to discover my talents and to put that into service? That's the main message, in my opinion, of today's Gospel. And I want to finish. I said to, be, uh, to Deacon Joe that I would be very short, and I think I'm keeping my promise, I want to finish with the first reading. 
Am I on? Go back to, and read the first reading. And it's interesting why, because remember, the first reading is always in connection or has something to say about the gospel. And the first reading is talking about a lady, a wife. Why? It's like, what is the connection there? But you read the, uh, the first reading, it's about a very virtuous wife. Okay. I was thinking, and this is my last thought. Now I was thinking, oh, this is what the church says, and this is what the Bible says. The church is the wife of Jesus Christ, or the bride. We, the church, is, we are the bride. Jesus Christ is the groom. Actually, last Sunday was about that. So we have to be like this lady, the church, each one of us. We have to be like this lady. And how she is? She works very hard. This is what we can see in today's first reading. She is a very virtuous lady. She doesn't want to be lazy and idle. She wants to work. This is what we have to do as Catholic Church, as disciples of Jesus Christ. Try to use the talent and to put that into service every single day. So let us pray today as we celebrate this Mass that we may first discover our own talents. And let us pray today that we may be people who are willing to give those talents, not to give those talents, to put those talents, talents into service of the Catholic Church, our church, our parish. You are very talented people, gifted people, it's just that some, I'm sorry to say it that way, so by the gospel, some of us are sometimes lazy. So I don't want you to hear that when Jesus Christ comes for the second time, you wicked, lazy servant. Could you imagine that? Don't, I don't want to hear that. And I don't want you to hear that either. So let us try to put into service the many talents that we have. Could you imagine? That would be a one, as I said one day, the best church, not only in the diocese, maybe in the entire Catholic Church, if we put every single talent into service. Please stand. I believe in 